Uh, good morning, and thank, <clears throat> thank you for coming. Um, and by the way, I just want to say who's here, Dr. John Brooklyn, uh, Medical Director at the Howard Center Clinic. Um, C Simone Groschemeyer, did I yeah, make sure? Perfect. Um, who is the Executive Director of Vermont Cares Network and 13 years there, uh, UVM grad, straight from Rhode Island. We're glad to have you here. Um, and our special, special, special guest is Misty Lemon, uh, who's a patient and has um, been helped by the program. <clears throat> I want to start by just saying what we all know. You know, the opioid epidemic in this country has just been brutal. Been brutal. And it's been aggravated uh, by COVID. And any one of us could find ourselves in the grip of opioids. And the folks who have been uh, in that grip, there's many reasons that they found themselves in that predicament. In some cases, uh, it was pain medication that was prescribed. And there's a whole separate story about the pharma industry and what they did. In other cases, uh, it was a personal issue, but it's a personal issue of the kind that every single one of us can have. We lost somebody, we had a setback, uh, something that happens in all of our lives. And to get a little bit of relief from that, uh, a person takes an opioid and then the powerful addictive qualities take over. And I think what I've seen, and this has been gratifying to me in Congress, <clears throat> is that this can happen anywhere to anybody at any time. And despite all of the battles in Congress about uh, the conflicts that we have, whether you represent a red state or a blue state, all of us represent folks who uh, need and want help. And what I've seen in Congress is there has been a bipartisan approach to try to get relief and help out uh, to the communities so that organizations like this, the Howard Center, uh, can be there for folks. Today we've got Misty here, but it can be folks uh, all across the country who are good, good people who want to have a good life and want to have love in their life. They want to be able to take care of themselves. They want to take care of the people they love. And of course, COVID, I think, made it much, much tougher because it was an isolating couple of years for us. So when you need that little help and you're more isolated and all of those insecurities take over uh, and make it tougher for you to get the help and the support you need, and it's help and support that oftentimes we get just in the ordinary course of our daily life. Having contact with other people, trusted friends, where you can have a little discussion and they can kind of bring you back to your self-confidence. You don't have that with the isolation of COVID. And what we've seen, of course, in Vermont and around the country is that the opioid epidemic expanded a lot during COVID. So we can't let up our commitment to trying to help individuals and helping organizations that are helping individuals. Uh, in Congress, uh, we now have the opportunity as members of Congress to select projects and advocate to fund projects that we believe would be good for our community. It's called congressionally directed spending. Every one of the grants that I advocate is public. You're entitled to judge it on the merits, whether you agree with me or disagree with me. So total disclosure. Well, one of the projects that I advocated and has been written into the budget uh, is the $1.15 million program to expand the Wheels and Waves program. And what it does is provide another option to get medically assisted uh, assistance, buprenorphine, for folks who are trying to get through the opioid crisis. You know what? It's practical. Because what it does is take advantage of telemedicine, something I've been working on 
for years where instead of the person who needs the help having to get in a car and come here, they can do telehealth from where they are and have the monitoring that is required in order to have the medically assisted dosage. And it's a combination of the technology of telehealth and then the technology of these wheels where the daily a dose uh, is contained and that can't be, and, and then in the observation of the provider, uh, the patient is able to take that dose at home without uh, the inconvenience, and, and really it, it's more, more than inconvenience, oftentimes the prohibitively difficult process of getting in the car and coming up here for all kinds of reasons. So what we're doing is just something that's practical. You're saying, hey, there's a way to do this where you can do it at home, and you can do it safely, and we have the security, uh, which everyone knows is essential, to make certain that the medication is not being used improperly. So what we have been able to secure is this grant of $1.15 million. It's going to facilitate the Howard Center of Vermont Cares doing the work uh, for many of our citizens who we revere, who we support, who are trying their very best uh, to be able to get the medical assisted treatment that has proven to be so effective. So uh, that's what this is about. And I just want to also, we're going to hear from Dr. Brooklyn, uh, acknowledge the incredible work that our providers have provided. You know, sometimes people say, Peter, it's a hard job in Congress, and in some ways it is, all the, the conflict. But you want to know where the hard job is? It's right here. You know, our job is to try to appropriate the funds to make it possible for people back home to do the work that needs to be done. Doing the work that needs to be done, <laughs> that's day in and day out, and it's tough. And uh, Dr. Brooklyn, you have done such an incredible job with the hub and spoke system that you helped devise, and it's really effective, and uh, it's working and being adopted around the country. Uh, Simone, you've been on this for 13 years, uh, and then I'll say a special few words about Misty before she speaks. Um, but I'm very happy uh, to have played this small role in getting this $1.15 million to do something that is totally practical, that is proven to be effective, and it's going to be good for our citizens in Vermont who are going through that really, really challenging uh, uh, effort of getting clean and getting off uh, of this addictive, uh, these addictive drugs. So thank you so much. Uh, I want to thank the Howard Center for hosting us, and now I want to turn it over uh, to Dr. Brooklyn, the medical director of the Howard Center uh, uh, Chittenden Clinic. Thank you, Dr. Brooklyn. Thank you. Appreciate those kind words. Um, just briefly, the project that we um, are going to be talking about was first done here at the Chittenden Clinic. Um, I actually have a device I'm going to show you in a moment, but the idea was basically to help people not have to come to the clinic every day. And we know throughout the state of Vermont, there are people who live 40, 50 miles away. And can you imagine every day getting up, putting on your clothes, getting in the car, driving 40 minutes to get your dose of medicine, turn around, go back home, parent, work, whatever the case may be. And so with this program, we were able to give, um, we originally had 50 people and then another 50, 60 people that we gave these devices to, and I'll show you in a moment what it looks like. Basically, when we give people um, me uh, methadone, we usually give it to them in a liquid form. But there's a device that is sold commercially as a pill reminder for people to take their medication daily. And so it's got a little beeper. And what we do is we fill it with, these are aspirins, these are not methadone. Uh, we fill it with pills for each day's dose. And then we close it. And then because we're concerned about safety, we put it in this steel box. We've actually had somebody drive their car over it by mistake without any damage. We lock it. And then we send it with the person home. So the very next day, the person would then, um, the alarm would beep, 
they would take it, the pills would come out, right? And then they'd set them on a countertop. And then they take their smartphone, which has an app, and they hover the smartphone over the pills so we can know what they are. And then they put their phone up, and then while the phone is up, they hit a button and it records them taking their medication at home. So they take their medication, they drink some water, they speak, and that's it. Huh. About one minute. They hit send, they send the video to the clinic, and we review the video later in the day to make sure the person's been compliant with their treatment. So all of that takes away that 40, 50 minute journey. Yeah. We actually had a couple people who had to be at work at five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. What time's the clinic go? Six. We had videos at three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, people taking their medicine and off they go. Huh. It kept them in treatment for a year and a half until they you know, decided to have regular take homes. But the point being that this really saves a tremendous amount of time. We actually demonstrated that of the people that we gave these to, about 75% before they got the wheel were working or taking care of family, going to school. And then at the end, we had 95% of people now engaged in some kind of pro-social activity. We had an average of five and a half hours a week of travel time saved. We had, I think, Simone, you've got the number, something like $72 on average a week saved in transportation costs, including Medicaid dollars, because sometimes it's up to $30 a day to transport somebody. So we believe very highly that this is going to make a big difference throughout the state, especially in really rural areas. So I'm excited about it. Thank you so much. Yeah. We're going to hopefully move forward with it in a very positive way for many Vermonters who can't stay in treatment. Just to explain how people can't get into that today. <laughs> That's the one, because that was a question I had too. So because <clears throat> it, uh, it turns every day, this is, pr this is locked and it's a steel box. So you really, the next, the, the wheel doesn't advance until the next day. I see. So if we set it for 7 o'clock in the morning, the next day, 7 o'clock in the morning will come, it'll beep, people will take their medicine, it doesn't move again to right. the following day. All right. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Brooklyn. You're and welcome. now, Simone, uh, thank you for your work, and we look forward to hearing from you as well. Sure. Yeah. Taking my aspirin and moving away. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us could use aspirin right now. <laughs> Um, thank you. And thank you, Congressman Welch, for all of your hard work um, and Dr. Brooklyn for creating this. It's really, um, it's really quite incredible. Uh, Vermont Care Part I'm Simone Rischmeyer with Vermont Care Partners. Uh, Vermont Care Partners is a network of 16 community-based agencies that are designated by the state to provide mental health, substance use disorder, and intellectual and developmental disability services and supports. Um, all of our agencies believe that Vermonters have a fundamental right to live healthy and safe lives in their communities with locally provided services. This program does just that. It brings medication-assisted treatment into people's homes and um, enables them to not have to leave work to go get services, enables transportation, time savings, and cost, reduces carbon emissions at the same time, an added benefit um, and reduces the stress of having to find child care and child supervision and we plan with these dollars to spread the program statewide to other hubs around the state and hope to have at least 50 people per hub signed up um, so approximately 400 people for the year and the funds will support the dispensers as well as um, the video application smartphones if necessary uh, staffing at the hubs, technical assistance for implementation and evaluation. We do really want to make sure that we are taking a good look at how this is working over the next year uh, in the hopes that we can expand it even further. It really is fundamental and it's, as you were saying, the timing now, keep, you know, people are, people are stressed, we're all stressed. And the more we can do to relieve people and to enable them to get the services they need in an easy manner, the better. So we're really excited about the opportunity. Um, you know, the program saves lives, and um, while Howard Center is the only hub that's a member of Vermont Care Partners, we just felt it was important for Vermont 
uh, to be able to expand this program. So really looking forward to working with the hubs, ADAP as a partner, Howard Center, your office, yeah. and um, with Dr. Brooklyn on, this, on expanding this program. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Simone, yeah. for all your good work. Thank you very much. And the, the very special person we have here is Misty Lemon, and uh, Misty's a patient. And you know what? It is so cool that you're willing to come and share your experience uh, so you can help other folks who've been through what you've been through. So we are really, really especially uh, grateful that you're here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh -oh. I just want to say that coming into the program when it came Coming into the program when it came time, um, when I actually got into the telehealth system, I was debating on leaving the program because I did work early in the morning and they were literally telling me that they were going to write me up if I was going to be late. Um, so it came at the perfect time and it was easy. It was easy to do. It saved time. It saved a lot of time because you know he, he was saying 40 minutes but I used to walk here from Shelburne Road <laughs> um, and back so sometimes it's longer than 40 minutes if you can't afford the bus or a taxi or you know whatever it may be um, but it was, it was the best program this place gave me my life back and it not just gave me my life back but it saved my life so this program has done more for me than I could ever show. Thank you. Thank You're you. You're doing good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Misty. I really appreciate it. Any questions? So oh, good. Go I ahead. have a question for Misty. So, Misty, when you had a wheel or you had a phone, I, you had the app? I had the app. Uh -huh. Okay. And yeah. how hard was it for you to learn? It was very easy. I came here, they showed me how to use it, and I went home and used it that night. I never had a problem. Beautiful. Not, not once. Beautiful. You know you know what this is? It's like Vermont practicality. You know, get it done. You know, make it simple and get it done. Um, and that's, you know, Misty, that's fantastic. I mean, you didn't have to walk here from Shelburne Road and <clears throat> you could yeah. keep your job. And just, yeah, just think what would happen yeah. if the price of getting your medication, the trip you had to take, was losing your job. And for most of us, the job we have is a major uh, support system for us. So this allows, enhances support. You get the medical assistance that is really helpful, and you keep your job, which is really helpful. Uh, so that's a, that's a wonderful story, Misty, about how this works. And it, we want it, more people to be able to... Uh, get the benefit of it just like you did. So no questions, we're around, but uh, thank you all very much. <coughs>